Both the channel and center section fader strips have a common set of controls comprising a motorized fader, a dedicated set of function keys together with an OLED information display. The switch group directly above the fader contains the PFL and AFL monitor keys and the channel on switch. PFL can be latched or fleeting and there is a backstop fader overpress option enabled via the main PFL setup menu. The channel on key has a dual state indicator with full brightness indicating channel on and fader open. The OLED shows an eight character user label together with input level metering and the number of any master control group that the channel is part of. Above the display are two multifunction keys with separate LED state indicators. A short push on the remote key enables or disables any function set to activate when the fader is opened. A long push activates the audio follow video override if a channel fader is being remote controlled from an external trigger for an example by a camera tally, and returns control to the operator. The protect key isolates the channel from the snapshot recall system, with the second level function locking the channel in place regardless of the currently active console layer. The two keys in conjunction with a master group key also set master and slave status for the fader. The final three key grouping consists of the fader spill key for breaking out a 5-1 or stereo channel onto the adjacent mono channels, or for spilling all faders controlled by a group master into the current layer. The link key toggles the fader strip to a user-designated second channel path. The link key illuminates at half brightness when an active path has been set up. The last key in this group is the attention key, which assigns the master channel to the selected fader strip. This is also indicated in the channel TFT display by a green outline around the attention channel meter. On the channel bays, the fader strips contain additional elements to control panning via a rotary encoder and display, together with mode and clear keys, plus a further set of user programmable controls known as free controls, consisting of two rotary encoders and four switches with an OLED display for parameter and function key information. These free controls can be user assigned to any channel parameter or switch function, as well as controlling external equipment via GPI closures and tally return status. Free control bank switching offers instant access to specific channel parameters, globally assigned to all the channel strip free controls. The channel bay TFT screen shows input source, metering, bus routing, processing order and status, as well as graphical overviews of the EQ and dynamics, auxiliary send levels and panning for each of the eight channels in the bay. Optionally, an external VGA feed can be viewed on the display. The show key, located below the master tile, replaces the multi-channel parameter overview with a more detailed graphical visualization of the EQ and dynamic settings, as well as the level and pre-post status of the 24 auxiliary sends for the channel currently assigned to the master tile. The high-resolution channel meters display mono, stereo, 5.1 or 7.1 levels according to the format of the channel strip. As well as the channel strip number, the source label and channel DSP number are shown at the top of the display. The meter signal can be selected from a number of points in the channel path, with the current source indicated above the meter. A central kickdown meter shows dynamic gain reduction, with a tri-state gate indicator at the base of the meter. The action of the optional dialog auto-mix process is displayed on the right edge of the meter. Below the meter, the channel processing order is displayed as horizontal status blocks, which are greyed out when not in circuit. Processing order is adjusted via the channel settings menu. Program bus routing is shown at the base of the routing display. Directly above are the ASG buses, followed by the 24 utility buses. All channel processing and bus routing, with the exception of panning, is controlled from the master tile. The processing in the ASG and program outputs is also controlled from the master tile if attention from a fader strip controlling a bus output. The master tile is very similar to an analog channel strip with dedicated controls for the majority of functions. Input, output and routing sections are located in the upper area of the tile. Auxiliary sends are controlled by the eight vertical encoders on the right hand side of the tile with page keys to access all 24 sends. As well as level, each send has an on key the even level encoder becomes the pan control on stereo linked sends. Aux send levels can be controlled directly from the fader strips by activating the aux to fader from the touchscreen aux bus pop-up. 
The channel strip faders control the send level and the channel on keys the send on function. The selected AUX bus number is displayed in the channel label area on the meter. Channel processing is controlled via dedicated control sets in the lower half of the tile. At the base of the tile are the channel menu keys. These call up menu windows which are displayed in the lower half of the TFT screen above the master tile. The stepped encoder and the left-right keys navigate the menu columns and select options. Channel strip processing is pre-configured and features high and low pass filters, a four-band parametric equalizer and a dynamic section with a compressor limiter and a gate. The filters cover the full 2020K bandwidth and can be switched between second, third and fourth order slopes. The parametric EQ section features outer shelving bands and two mid-range parametric bands. Each section has a fully variable frequency gain and slope with an infinite notch mode for the mid-band sections and a full parametric option for the outer shelving bands. The dynamic section is modelled on the classic SSL channel strip design and has a true RMS sensing sidechain, providing transparent analogue style dynamic range control. Compression ratio is continuously variable with an optional limit mode. Fully variable time constants, together with a feed-forward delay for zero overshoot gain reduction, simplify optimising the unit for complex program sources. Gain makeup can be automatic as well as manual. The gate section includes variable hold and release controls as well as attack. Maximum gate depth is 80 dBs and the expander mode provides a softer 2 to 1 downwards expansion for unobtrusive background noise removal. The inverted gate mode configures the gate section as a ducker, controlled via the external sidechain key input. The dynamics processing has automatic sidechain linking when used on a stereo 5.1 or 7.1 channel or bus. The channel strip includes an insert point which can be sourced from any console I.O. port. The send is active at all times, providing a further option for routing a channel feed to an external comm system or recorder. 64 channels of delay, with a maximum delay time of 5.4 seconds per a channel, provide delay processing for channels, audio subgroups and program outputs. Delay time can be set in samples, frames, milliseconds or seconds to three-digit accuracy. Processing order is user configurable from the channel settings menu. Any process can be placed post-fader as well as pre-fader and can be swapped on the fly without any audible artefacts if the channel is passing audio. Plus or minus 20 dBs of digital gain trim can be applied to the channel input signal as well as a 180 degree phase reversal. If the attention channel is stereo, then a differential balance control applies an offset to the gain trim to correct any imbalance in the incoming signal, and both left and right phase switches are in circuit. Additional controls route either the left or the right input to both sides of the stereo channel, or with both selected, a mono mix of left plus right is routed to the channel strip inputs, with the balance control acting as a differential mix control for the left-right mix. The ALT key flips the input to a second pre-assigned source. The source label for the alternate input is shown below the EQ graph, and the main channel label at the top of the meter changes colour when the ALT input is the active channel source. Remote control of compatible mic preamps is from the section next to the left of the input gain block, which includes switching for phantom power and a pad, plus additional switches for a filter and a limiter if supported by the mic amp in use. Bus routing is controlled from the key group located to the right of the input section. Bus panning is controlled from a dedicated encoder on each fader strip. There are two associated keys, clear, which resets the pan to a default value, center for a mono signal, full width for a stereo source, and full width and depth for a 5.1 or a 7.1 channel. The mode switch pages the encoder through additional pan parameters. The extra parameters are determined by the format of the channel and the format of the assigned bus. The surround divergence parameter ensures that mono and stereo channels need not contribute to the center channel if required, retaining a true phantom center for 4.1 formats. Panning is displayed visually on the channel meter strip and can also be controlled via the touchscreen surround panner if dynamic panning is needed. This includes on-screen controls for width, depth, divergence and LFE gain, plus the ability to lock a two-axis pan move or jump directly to any center or corner of the surround field. C100 panning features automatic downmixing, 
so that a stereo channel can be routed to a mono bus or a 5.1 channel to a stereo or mono bus with the correct bus attenuation values automatically applied. As well as down mixing, stereo up mixing is available as an option. On any stereo channel routed to a 5.1 bus, up mixing can be selected instead of conventional level based panning. The process extracts the direct and ambient information from a stereo signal and distributes this to the five main surround channels, resulting in a realistic 5.1 sound field. The user has control over center divergence, center gain, and the front rear image bias using the channel strip free controls. The divergence parameter can remove the center component entirely if a 4.1 upmix is required. The resulting 5.1 signals can be downmixed back to stereo without undesirable comb filter artifacts as no delays are involved in the process.